It's the Team SMI Starting Lineup Media Day presented by SMI. Amy Brown, State Farm, Edward Jones of Carrollton, Douglasville, and Villarica, West Georgia Plumbing, Septic, and HVAC, Southland Insurance, Osier Apparel, and West Georgia Technology Repair. Welcome back in. We are super excited now to be sitting down with the Harrelson County Rebels, Coach Scott Peavy, uh, Trey Loveless, and uh, Caleb Hardiman. How are we doing today, gentlemen? Fantastic. Awesome. awesome. Well, we're happy to have you guys. We just got done with the Carrollton Trojans, talked about their 2019 season. Let's talk about the 2018 season. Phenomenal. 8-3 season. Uh, I think it tied the school record for wins, if I'm not mistaken. I think I read that right. Traylon Shepard, uh, big year. I think if he would have played one more game, would have probably had the all-time record without a doubt. Uh, but that's all in the past, and we're here to turn a new page in the 2019 season. Talk about the offseason, Coach, and, and what 2019 we expect. Well, like you said, you know, I'm excited to talk about Traylon, too. You know, he's yeah. a fantastic kid, a fantastic player, and kind of set the groundwork for our program on um, – kind of where, where direction we want to go and uh and he was a great leader in our program and and i think he's taught you know guys like uh the two guys i brought today on on how to be a leader and how to work hard and um Traylon was a great example of that every day when practice was over he was running heels and 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 every day and doing something extra and he's taught that to these guys too and they're they're kind of following that lead and doing the same thing in our program now um thought we had a tremendous off season you know we did a great job in the state powerlifting meet um our you know we had we brought. We had seven guys, and and uh, I think we had four state champions, and um, so so you know that kind of set the tone for our off season. We played uh, five high school out of Alabama in the spring, and um, defending state champs, def- right? defending state yeah. champ. They actually won three out of the last five, and and um, we played great. And you know we got kind of gypped on a technicality. We were supposed to be no kicking, so we went for two. They score and kick the extra point. I'm not sure how that happened, but they beat us 7-6. Oh, so. well, you were in Alabama. <laughs> yeah, we were in Alabama. So, so uh, you know, I, th- I thought our guys played great, and, um, you know, it was a good learning experience for our guys. And so, and that kind of set the tone for the summer, and, you know, our kids have uh, done a tremendous job in the weight room and in conditioning and um, going to 7-on-7s, padded camps and things right. like that. You know, we're not a 7-on-7 team, um, but, you know, to me, uh, that we can function in it, and the fact that we can play some defense in it was great for us. And you know, so we're not we're not going to air that thing out, and you know, be great at seven on seven. But you know, the way that we competed and things was fantastic. So really proud of our kids. Really par- uh, proud of our senior class. You know, it's um, we went from a class of uh, five seniors to seven seniors, and we have fourteen this year. And um, so I'm excited about that. And we have some fantastic kids that have really put a tremendous amount of effort into being successful yeah, this and season. That's, and that's why I don't want people to just kind of squandered the Harrelson County train because, like you just said, you only had five seniors last year, seven seniors. Yeah, seven so last year. you got uh, obviously losing Traylon Shepard, but you've got from what everybody's telling me, you got three backs this year instead of, of course, we, we, we do. We, we, have some, we have some kids that I feel very confident carrying the football for us and um, they've been great players for us already, and so it's not a surprise that, that they'll, they'll do a good job for us carrying the football. Um, but, uh, you know, we, like I said, our leadership has changed because we have so many seniors seniors that are all uh, vested in our program for the last three years and, and they've been there every day early mornings and, and staying late and so I'm very very excited about our football team. I want to give you a little bit of history about your school that you two probably don't know and maybe you do. When Harrelson County first started they combined their football well, they combined their athletics with West Harrelson and so forth but the schools were still separate. So they had a red, white, and blue bus, and, it was, and they would go around and pick up kids to come to practice. And here we are at Dallas. This is years ago, but anyway. And we called you West Buckapusa. Now, fellas, y'all have come a long, long, long way since then. <laughs> My point to that is this. How are you going to keep on with what you had last year? What is your plan for this year? And we'll start out, Trey, you first. What's your plan for this year? Well, first of all, uh, it starts in the weight room is what I believe. You know, that keeps you from being injured that, you know, if you're not strong, you can't play on Friday nights. And teaching the young guys, really, that's what Coach Peavy tells us. If if you, uh, you know, if you're not a guy with a starting role, the least you can do is teach a young guy how to lead, teach him how to carry himself, you know. And it's small things like hanging your, putting your helmet in the right place or putting your cleats in the right spot. Just, you know, having your jersey tucked in when you play. It's just those little things that really – push them to be. And what Caleb, what, what is your plan for this year? Um, just like uh, my buddy Trey said, it starts in the weight room. You know, we had some great leadership with people like Traylon Shepard last year. You know, you think, of, you know, you have one player like that that's able to set the records that he did and all the great things he did. Well, imagine 
uh, 11 players on offense coming go. at you with that same mentality. So a great, great leadership in the weight room and in the little things, taking pride in everything that you do, and that's what makes players great. I like that. I do too. That's good. Coach, give us a little insight. We heard Coach Calhoun mention this a while ago, but the paddock camp now is something that a lot of the teams are going to um, – that is different. You know, back when we were younger, you know, if we went anywhere, it was like a defensive camp and you went to West Georgia because Florida State was coming in and running it or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, and so, of course, everybody hears the seven on seven because, you know, that's where all your skill kids go and everybody sees that. But kind of get us a little bit more about what the padded camps are in relation to some of the other, that they, it's more feasible for the, the playing season. It, you know, it, it just simulates real football. You know, seven on seven, a lot of times um, it doesn't really simulate the game. There's some throws that you can make in seven on seven that you can't make with linemen in there. You know, things like that, those shallow routes that someone might be getting knocked out. That you're not so, <laughs> yeah. They're not so easy to throw in a real game. And, um, you know, in some of those deep throws that you throw in seven on seven, you know, we got guys that I hope are coming off the edge. Don't give you that much time. You know, and we got a player like that here. So, um, so, so being able to transition into into the the padded camp. You know, when I was in Alabama, we played eleven on eleven a lot, and you know, guys would get their shoulders dinged up and stuff like that. You just wearing a helmet. Well, with with eleven on eleven, now you're keeping kids safe, and it simulates the game a lot better. And it's really good for teams like us that, you know, we don't throw it very often. So it, it's it it really simulates football a lot better for us because we are going to be running heavy and um and and you know and, and it's no when you when you can control the teams that are playing you know don't take that hit across the middle kind of lay off it a little bit don't try not you know try to keep each other safe and you're playing against teams that are, you know similar minded you don't want anybody to get killed coming across the middle and things like that so um you know there is a, there it's a lot safer and it and it and it's a lot more like the game of football well, Coach mentioned the uh, red, white, and blue bus, and the first thing that popped in my head when I looked at the schedule, you got six road games, and mm -hmm. these are not wow. just down the street. They're in Rome and, and Sonoraville and Ringgold. Yeah. You're going pretty far away. How have you tried to be, be able to prepare your kids for, for road trips? They're going probably going to be – well, I forgot. Y'all don't go to school. You go to school on Monday. You don't go to school on Monday. Yeah, so, yeah. But, so they're going to be getting out of school early on Fridays. They're yeah. going to enjoy that. And, and it, it, the good thing about that is is, is, is knock on wood, we, we – probably play better on the road which is crazy so i i, I um I, I it doesn't it doesn't scare me at all because yeah. we we've traditionally played well on the road so hopefully we'll continue that and and you know it's gonna make a big difference in our season if we we better play well on the road or we could be first home game not having a very big crowd because yeah. <laughs> you it get is Calhoun so deep. at home i believe we, we do yeah. we do and you know if we, if we can do our part and 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 make that a game that's meaningful yeah. i mean I, I you might not be able to put another body in there so <laughs> I'm, I'm excited about that and we've talked about that all summer long that you know we got to do our part and make sure that when they come Come in that you know the game means something to both teams yeah. so hopefully hopefully we'll do that and and you know we work towards that every day so we're hoping that ends up that way trey you want to add to that uh, playing on the road do you like playing on the road uh, compared to playing at home or uh well this is kind of a goofier part of it but one part i like is i like wearing white more than i do blue for some reason <laughs> but uh yeah it's something about that bus ride <clears throat> Going up there, you know, you get your, your music in. You can see all the passing by all the towns you're going through. Then you finally get there. You get to their stadium, and you see all of them warming up out there. There's just something about that that gets you like, all right, I'm in it now. I'm in their house. So why not? I think we I think we beat two teams last year on homecoming because yeah. uh, we went to a North Murray game, and they were a good team. And we weren't expected to win by a lot. And we go on the last – offense goes out there, uh, gets the ball down far enough to where it makes it hard enough for them to – uh, come back up the field, defense gets a stop, and we win the game on homecoming. If, I'm, if I'm not mistaken, there was a bogus pass interference call against you on that game, too, because <laughs> yeah. we were watching somebody yeah. actually Facebook Live that game, and we were at the station watching – the rest of that game, and yeah, then those ugly was, yellow jerseys, right? They're the yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was it was it was uh, it was hard to say. I didn't have to try to get some home cooking in there, but it was yeah. it was you know a fantastic win. And you know we talk about Traylon; he had a career night, yeah. and um, so it was a big win for us there for sure. Caleb, you want to talk about playing on the road too, or 
Uh, I'm kind of like Trey as well. I like playing on the road a lot because I like going to someone else's house and showing them what's up. Uh, we walked into the, the North Murray that. game, and actually as we walked into the field, uh, we had never beat them. And they were like in the past two meetings, Harrison County, North Murray, the score's been like 130 to 20. And we said, that's not happening today. So, <laughs> you know, in the game before that, you know, the offense stepped up, so we gave our defense a chance, and we showed, you know, they even shut the scoreboard off immediately after the game. Wow. So that's what you know. You don't take nothing something. from nobody. Did. Well, I, I'm going to help you stay at home. This year, we're going to have a fourth radio station, and it's going to be Harrelson County football. So maybe that'll help you with home. Your games are going to be live. Well, if you call us live. But anyway, your games are going to be live. We won't just be at home. We'll be wherever you are. So that right there should help you to enjoy your football games at home. And I, when I say enjoy, I don't mean just, uh, hey, we're going to go out and play some football. We're going to go out and knock some heads. It's going to be awesome. There you go. Hey, you know, I did the, I did the you, you, you put the mojo on me. I did the pregame. <laughs> Nobody had done the pregame, and they were winning at home. And I went and did it, and then we got beat at home. So, I'm <laughs> yeah. Well, you're going, you're going to be 10 ball games, yeah. and we're going to have the uh, – the tailgate show out there, and hopefully you'll let us stay for the entire day, no, not that, run us off. No, I'm no, kidding. No, we I'm love kidding. it. I'm just teasing. It was great. <laughs> and, uh, anytime you get to get some uh, publicity to your kids, we're all yeah. about it. So um, it was fantastic. Coach Horsley, anything else you want to add? Um, a quick question here. One of the big things that you hear a lot, you know, I've heard you guys talk about the weight room and, and a lot of that stuff, and, and knowing that both of you guys, you guys do multiple sports. You don't just specialize in one. And, you know, sometimes I think as parents sometimes and as coaches, we start tracking our kids into just playing that one sport and don't let them go there. Um, talk to us a little bit about how the second sport that you guys, outside of football, because we know you play football because you're here, but talk about how that second sport has helped you guys get to where you're at as a football player. And so it doesn't matter which one of you go first. Uh, well, to start it off with like track, for instance, the head coach of the track team, he's also the D-line coach on our football team, is uh, Coach Steve Martin, and he was a assistant strength and conditioning coach at Alabama, TCU, Auburn. He's held jobs everywhere, so he, he knows really well what to do to get you faster. And uh, especially speaking for me, coming off the edge, it's helped me a lot. Like last year, uh, I think I had 13 sacks or something like that, and I've gotten way faster and more fluid with my hips and just – going out there with him from time to time and working on those things, footwork, speed, and all that, it, it helps a lot. Caleb, how's it helped you? And tell us what other sports you are involved with. Um, I wrestle as well. Um, wrestling really helps me specifically because of just the conditioning aspect of it. A lot of flexibility involved, and it does a lot for your mental toughness. You know, dealing with adversity, you know, you're down by five points. you got to get three takedowns. You're in the third period. You don't have time to feel sorry for yourself because it's just you. <laughs> You know, you know, Caleb, you know, Caleb was also in the state finals yeah. in wrestling. Oh. Yeah. So uh, I, I've had a lot of great mentors in my life that have helped me a whole lot, you know, dealing with adversity. So, you know, you get in a football game, and you're used to how tired you're being. So, you know, it just helps a lot with football. Well, at the end of the season, uh, gentlemen, and uh, here uh, August, 23rd, August 23rd, right, at Gordon Central, we'll be there on – 93.7 with Seth Kane and Kenny Walker on the call. So we're looking forward to it, and uh, let's have some good practice in between now and then. Well, that's fantastic. Thank you guys for your coverage. And, you know, like I said, anything, anytime we can get uh, publicity to our kids is fantastic. And we thank you guys for all your hard work and what you do um, to give these kids some exposure. And you guys are scrimmaging on the 10th? 16th. The 16th, yes. Yeah. We play at home against uh, Greenville. Greenville, Greenville. Okay. okay. Well, right. you know, a good thing is, is, uh, you know, we'll be the one. If you guys are, you can't wait to watch high school football uh, hit each other on on Wednesday night. We're going to do midnight madness at twelve o'clock. So the first official minute that you, we can practice, we're going to be hitting each other. So this right. coming Wednesday? Yeah, tomorrow night. Oh, at, you go, you tomorrow get night. You a pot of coffee, hot dog! I get me a pot of coffee and I'll at, be at, there, baby. We'll be there. We'll be there. You know, just just to create some excitement in our program. Awesome. That you know, the first minute we're allowed to hit this season, we're going to be hitting. Awesome. Well, thank y'all so much for being on with us. And when we come back, we'll be sitting down with the defending state champs, the Hurt County Braves, right here on the Team SMI Media Day.